What's good everybody? It's your boy James Michael from Jim Reviews here today with a quick comparison of two shoes that everyone seems to want to know about what's better, what's the difference. In this video, I will be comparing the Nike Zoom Fly 3 right here and the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent here. But I'll probably have more B-roll going on so you don't get to look at me the whole time. The Nike Vaporfly Next Percent is the all-out top in lightweight top notch racing carbon plate option the main difference between the shoes is the foam in the zoom fly 3 you're going to have react cushioning the react cushioning is the exact same cushioning from what you see in the epic react the odyssey react and some other shoes like the legend react which kind of sucked but that's beside the point oh this foam is one of my favorite foams it is soft it is bouncy it is responsive it has that nice balance that I like in the shoe. So you get that combined with a full length carbon plate. Now the carbon plate, as you guys may know, is what makes these shoes so special, or in this case, expensive. The Zoom Fly and the Vapor Fly have full length carbon plates. And so well, you may be thinking, well, they both have carbon plates. What's the difference? The difference is the Zoom X foam and the Vapor Fly. The Zoom X foam is like beyond anything else Nike has. It is lighter than React, it is bouncier than React, it is everything, it, it is squishier, it is some other level stuff. But it does not last long. And I mean by last long, it does not last long whatsoever. As far as it being as good as it is, you might get 200 miles out of it before you're just like, all right, it's nowhere as bouncy as it was. But while it lasts, it's amazing. The React is gonna be a lot more stable the Zoom X cushioning is going to be a lot more bouncy, but at the same time, this is a racing flat. So this is kind of why many people use the Zoom Fly as the training counterpart of the Vipper Fly. They use the Zoom Fly to kind of get the carbon plate feel for the training runs, and then they'll go out and get the Vipper Fly for the racing. So the half marathons, the full marathons, and some people use the Vipper Fly for like shorter races, the 5K, 10Ks. I honestly don't think you get that much out of it for that distance. I feel like the longer you go, the more you get out of the foam. But other than that, I would go with a different racing shoe for 5Ks, but that's beside the point. So the other question is, can you race in the Zoom Fly? And the answer is yes. This is technically part of Nike's racing line. It doesn't have their Zoom X and it's not as light, but it can be a racing shoe. I mean, even at first glance, you might see the shoe looks very similar. So both of these shoes both have Nike's Vapor Weave uppers. This upper is like a very thin, almost plastic filling uppers. And I you know I like fly knit in some shoes. The Vapor Fly fly knit, it was just too unstable. The shoes are already pretty unstable because it's just, you know, a narrow base. But having that combined with the fly knit wasn't my cup of tea. In this option, I believe the Vapor Weave in the next percent saves the shoe. And to me, it's much better than what it was for me. You know, some are like, Jamie, you hate Vapor Fly. I don't go off a of hype, I go off of what it feels like. This one feels a lot better as far as the upper compared to the Flyknit versions. That's all. So the Zoom Fly upper is a little bit different. It has more of that booty-like fit where you have your foot within the shoe and then over that you have the Vapor Weave going around that. So your foot's a little more secure as far as around your foot. As for the Vapor Fly option, it's not too unstable actually, but it's not as secure on the midfoot. But when you're going that fast, you want a light shoe, you gotta make some sacrifices. So it makes sense, but I didn't find it a problem as far as like using the shoe in real, in real life. The heel counters, I will say, as weird as it is, the Vaporfly is like a stripped down version of the Zoom Fly as far as being minimal and just being light. But I actually felt more secure in the Vaporfly as far as the heel cup compared to the Zoom Fly. So the Vaporfly has these pads that kind of go around your heel, around the ankle, and I found that it was added a little cushioning, but also made the shoe a little more secure in that area, so your heel didn't slip as much. Whereas the Zoom Fly doesn't really have that padding as much, and it was slipping. Yeah, I, I did the lockdown thing, and it helps a little bit, but yeah, I didn't really, I found the Vapor Fly being more secure. So, ironically, the stripped down shoe was a little more secure. I'm not sure how that works, I'm just going off how it feels. In the outsoles, you have pretty much the exact same outsole. You got this rubber throughout the midfoot, forefoot area. You got a little bit in the heel. And yeah, as you can see, this one's a little dirty. You know, I've been uh, breaking this one in. This is actually not my model. My shoe's actually in my car, but it is disgusting. There was mud and grass, and I ain't like cleaning it. So this was the extra one that we got. 
Um, so it's all fresh and clean. Now there are some negatives. Um, the zoom fly for me, even though it's not as bad as it was last year, it still feels a little narrow in the base. Now you can't go off of how it looks, because it's funny because these look the same as far as the base width, but my foot is still coming off the edge right here. Like my foot, when I'm standing in the shoe, it's still coming off the edge a little bit. Once you're running, it's not as bad, but it's still kind of like, why? Especially when compared to shoes like the Speed Elite or the Carbon X, it just feels like, you know, just make it a little, make it more accommodating for more people. The Zoom Fly actually doesn't have that issue. So it looks the same, but it actually has a little more base right on top. So if they can put this base with this foam, I feel like we might have like a pretty good shoe. So what are the shoes used for? I would say for me, this is gonna be much more of a trainer, a speed trainer. It's kind of heavy as far as being an all out racing shoe. As far as the options you have out there, like I said, the Speed Elite, the Carbon X, the Carbon Rocket, you got racing flats. This is just a heavier option, which I mean, unless you're really like, I need to go fast, fast, you can still use this as a racing option. I just rather not. I think it's more of like a, a speed option for like your training runs, so where you can kind of go light when you want to go light, but kind of train hard when you want to train hard. It's much more durable, so it's kind of give and take. But for 250, ugh, man, these shoes are killing us nowadays, man. I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna go with the idea that you know you know what you're getting. Vaporfly is popular, it's a swoosh. You're gonna pay the price. These go on sale pretty quickly, so after like a few months, you could probably get these for like 130, 140, you know, discount codes on Nike.com or Running Warehouse. You know, you it's not as bad. So if I had to pick one shoe, I would probably go with the Vaporfly only because it's just more fun to run in. And I believe there's other options as far as like the training options for like carbon plate. Because honestly, I really use the Carbon X as like a training option for carbon plates. And then if you want to go with the Vapor Fly for races, that makes more sense than going with the Zoom Fly. But you know, there's no right answer, no wrong answer. So yeah, those are my thoughts as far as the Vapor Fly next percent compared to the Zoom Fly 3. I know a lot of you guys have the shoes, so please let me know what you guys think about them. Are these better than last year's models? Do you prefer these before the old ones? Do you have both? Do you think one's a ripoff? Some people hate the paper fly. Um, I think it's just uh, it's a little too squishy for my taste as far as like in most of my runs that I do. I prefer the Speed Elites and the Carbon Nexus overall, plus the price, the value of the shoe. A little too expensive, but you know, they're, they're quite expensive, especially when you have to get two pairs because for you and the running person in my videos. Which I will say, my reviews on both shoes will be out very soon, so stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel for more content. Like, dislike, leave a comment. Yeah. And with that said, be sure to stay in school, don't do drugs, and if you can, keep it tight.